This week's guest on Turning Point with Frank McKay is Mickey Dolenz. There's no question that the monkeys fall into the category of pop culture icons. In their heyday, the so-called Prefab Four would be unable to leave their hotel rooms while touring. Hordes of preteens and other fans of their popular TV show would follow their every move in what was a kind of a mini Beatlemania. Stay tuned as Mickey Dolenz talks about the monkeys, his life and career, and the recent and sudden death of his friend and bandmate, Davy Jones. And now, Turning Point with Frank McKay. Welcome. Welcome to Turning Point. Our very special guest today, and we're thrilled to have him, is pop culture icon and wonderful vocalist, Mickey Dolenz. Mickey, how are you? <laughs> Great, thanks. A Great introduction. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> pop you, culture icon. <laughs> okay. hey, I, how else do you say it? I mean, you've, you've been around for so many years. I mean, people, our publicist was just beside herself with excitement. Um, to uh, to have you on, uh, so many people. Oh, great! Thank you, know, you so much. So many people love you and love your work. I mean, it's uh, it's it's been quite a ride, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it has. Yeah, I, uh, boy. Um, uh, geez, uh, I guess yeah. I mean, if you include my my work as a kid, you know, I was a a child star um, yeah. at like ten years old, and. Uh, my parents both in the business and grew up in the, you know, in, uh, around the business. But, but uh, not. Uh, but funnily enough, my dad, who was like off the boat from Italy, he didn't. Uh, I don't know why, but he didn't get into the, <coughs> excuse me, the Hollywood, uh, Beverly Hills kind of crowd. Um, we lived out always on a, out in the valley on a, ranchette with horses and, and. Uh, you know, vegetable gardens and <clears throat> stuff like that. So, I even though I was in, you know, in and around the business because uh, my dad and mom were both in the business. So uh, I didn't grow up in a, I, I suppose, typical sort of Hollywood lifestyle. But yeah. uh, I think that maybe it's served me, you know, later on, helps uh, serve me later on in, in life. Yeah. Oh, okay, keep you a little grounded, maybe. Uh, but George yeah. Dolan's was uh, is is your dad? Is your dad still with us? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, he oh, he passed away many, many decades ago. He he passed away when I was like seventeen, which oh. was not not a good thing. But uh, no, uh, what what did your dad do? I know he was an actor, but uh, any anything he that was an actor. Uh, yep, he he did quite a few movies. He had a a big TV show on in the in the fifties, about the same time I did, called The Count of Monte Cristo. He mm. played the Count of Monte Cristo, the famous uh, character in the TV series. Did quite a few movies was under contract to Howard Hughes for a while, but then he used, uh, I guess it's wisely, he used the money that he had, and uh, he bought a, a restaurant uh, in Hollywood and uh, <clears throat> a very, became a very famous uh, <clears throat> restaurant where all the celebrities used to hang out. It was called the Marquee, and um, he, uh, he spent most of his time after that, you know, at, uh, at the restaurant, doing the restaurant stuff. We are with Mickey Dolan's pop culture icon, Mickey Dolan, singer, actor, and uh, and certainly uh, that that pop figure that we talk about. Uh, what did your dad say about Howard Hughes? Did he have any uh, interesting stories? <laughs> I don't remember. You know, I just heard the the story. My dad uh, was working at a <clears throat> uh, uh, at a restaurant club called a very famous one called the Trocadero mm. here in in Los Angeles in Hollywood on the Sunset Strip. A very famous place. And <clears throat> again, you know, all the all the celebs of the time, you know, would would hang out there. And he was the mater d. He'd worked his way up through the restaurant business. I, I gather, you know, I heard stories a little bit when I was a kid, uh, uh, starting out as like a waiter and then uh, becoming, you know, mater d, and then eventually owning one. <clears throat> and he said the story he told he told was that he was in the men's room at the Trocadero, working there as the maitre d', and Howard Hughes <laughs> came in and was <laughs> standing next to him, I guess, and my father, and he said, uh, oh, you're the maitre d', and my father said, yeah, I, but I'm, and I'm also an actor, and Howard Hughes signed him up. <laughs> in the men's room. But Howard, uh, Howard Hughes would do that. He would sign all these people, and then I think my dad only made, like, uh, a couple of films with Howard Hughes, but I mean Howard Hughes only made a couple of films. He, yeah, you know he talked about it a lot, but I, but I don't think he really was that, you know, kind of productive. It's funny. But anyway, that, uh, yeah, 
It's funny you my mentioned dad, he. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm Vicky, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say it's funny that they met in a men's room. He had he had such a germ phobia later on in his life, right? How would you? Yeah, use? that is. <laughs> you're right. That that's kind of weird. How funny, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. You were gonna that. say something. No, that's all. I was just gonna say, you know, I. But like I said, my dad died uh, a long, long time ago, so hmm. <clears throat> I how, don't recall. The, you know, frankly, I don't recall too much about him. Yeah. How about uh, how about your mom? She was an actress as well. Uh, well, she was when they met. She then ended up being uh, a mom. Yeah. Because uh, we had, I have two, uh, three, uh, sorry, three siblings, and um, but she was in the business. She'd come out from Texas, Austin, Texas, to to make it in Hollywood, and she was doing okay. And uh, they met doing a play together uh, in Hollywood, and um, she uh, then, of course, they got married and had kids, and she didn't uh, do much work after that. Uh, in the business, <clears throat> but um, yeah, that's what she, but she was a singer. That's where I, for between the two of them, is where I obviously I got exposed to to music and to to all different kinds. You know, my father would play uh, everything from Segovia to Mario Lanza, and then my mom would play uh, Sons of the Pioneers and and Patty Page and mm. Tennessee Ernie Ford and uh, big band uh, Glenn Miller. So I got ex- exposed to an awful lot of different types of music at a very young age. My first instrument was Spanish guitar, that you know, uh, that that Segovia kind of thing. Wow, that was my first uh, my first instrument. Did you? My take dad a- got me a, a Spanish guitar, and I took lessons. I loved it. It was great, great fun. And <clears throat> then I got into high school, and I started going to parties or the beach and bring my guitar. And I noticed that the girls liked. Kingston Trio better than Segovia, <laughs> so wow. I started playing folk music. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it a lot of times it's based on on women or girls in that case, right? <laughs> People getting into music for the uh, for the right reasons, well, I whole, guess. Well, our whole lives. <laughs> where, where did you go to uh, high school? Based out here in uh, L.A. in the San Fernando Valley, a place called Grant High, hmm. and uh, I just actually got inducted in the Grant High Hall of Fame. A few weeks ago, who else is in that Hall of Fame? Who did you? Who did you? Tom have Selleck is Tom Selleck is the one name that comes to mind. <clears throat> well, that's interesting. Yeah, was, he was in the, at school. We were there about the same time. No kidding. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Did, were you a friend of his? Oh, I, 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 I seem to remember him, and we've bumped into each other over the years, and kind of remind each other about it. Uh, I, we didn't hang like you know completely. You know, let's talk about the monkeys for a second. And just a reminder to those who just t- may be tuning in now, Mickey Dolans of the Monkeys is our very special guest. You have uh, you, you had an icon in the music business in Don Kirshner, and I know uh, you know some of your bandmates had uh, had battles with him. From what I understand, or from what I've read, you had the best relationship with Kirshner out of the out of the four. Is that correct? Well, that's I, I don't know. I, I I've not read that particular theme. I never had. A big problem with him, uh, certainly uh, uh, not personally. Um, you know, the issue was that w- that we and Mike. You know, he, he admittedly Mike is the one that sort of, you know, was uh, uh, heading the palace revolt, and it was simply because you know we had absolutely no control over anything to do with the music. It, uh, <clears throat> uh, not the songs, not who sang them, not what was released, not the album cover, not the liner notes, you know, just none. And uh, Mike, particularly, like I say, uh, you know, uh, you know, he was, a, uh, was, and still is, of course, a wonderful singer-songwriter, and, you know, he wanted his, his stuff to get, at least get a shot, and that's what kind of started it. But, uh, you know, I, I have nothing, n- nothing bad to say about Donnie Kirshner. I mean, the, he had an incredible ear, obviously, because he was uh, uh, somewhat responsible for 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 picking the tunes, and he ran you know the Brill Building back in New York uh, yeah. in Screen Gems Publishing Music. So all of those writers like Carol King and Neil Diamond and all those people, you know, were going through that, going through the Brill Building. And Donnie had a great ear, and those songs, you know, were wonderful songs that 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 we sang, that I sang. I sang most of the leads, and I uh, never had a problem with it, <clears throat> with that, yeah. you know, but. But then again, I mean, I did like it when I was able to start writing and, and recording my own material, too, you know. 
Turning Point with Frank McKay returns right after this. Welcome back to Turning Point with Frank McKay. We are with Mickey Dolans of the Monkees. And Mickey, when you first auditioned for the Monkees, did you did you assume this was going to go well because of some of the names that were involved, uh, you know, Kirshner and, uh, and, and some of the other well, names? Well, <laughs> at the time, n- none of those names were well-known to anybody. I mean, back in those days, even songwriters, you know, um, weren't nearly as well-known until, I guess, you know, around the 70s uh, with Carole King and Tapestry, for instance. Um, you know, I, I when I first started meeting the songwriters, I'd never heard of them. Uh, and, you know, very few people had. I mean, it, 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 they weren't, uh, songwriters were not nearly as well-known as they as they are now, and then I found out that she wrote Locomotion, and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you wrote Locomotion? Oh, how cool, because um, you just didn't hear about songwriters. They had, their names were on the, on the records in little tiny print, and you, you really had no idea, and then, of course, Lennon and McCartney came along, and, and you started paying a little bit more attention, and then, so that's how it happened, but as far as the people in, on the television show, and remember, don't forget, the Monkey started out as a television show about a band. Right. Like Glee is a television show about a Glee club. Um, and that's an important distinction than your, than your like, traditional sort of stand, standard uh, uh, class, classic kind of way that a band gets together. You know, they grow up together or they're related or they uh, <clears throat> went to school together or whatever. The Monkeys was a television show about this band that lived in this, you know, beach house, which wasn't obviously really a beach house. It was, right. a, it was a set. And, <clears throat> but they, they must have had the intention of, of having us record and, and go on tour, because otherwise, in the audition process, they wouldn't have bothered to have you sing and play an instrument. And my audition piece was Johnny Be Good on the guitar. You know? No kidding. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. <clears throat> and I still do it in concert to this day. Oh, it's very and, interesting. Because uh, it's the song that got me the gig. <laughs> yeah. Well, once you did start playing as a band, uh, you had people like Hendrix open for the Monkees, which is an amazing yeah. situation. I remember <laughs> somebody crazy, said yeah. said that the Monkees opened for Hendrix. I said, no, it's the other no. way around. Hendrix opened, no, no, he, opened for he the Monkees. for us. I, I saw him at the, well, the story you probably heard, I saw him at the Monterey Pop Festival, and he was, you know, very theatrical, and we were looking for an opening act at the time. And I just thought, you know, he, very theatrical, colorful, and of course the music was incredible. And I'm the one that suggested it <laughs> to everybody yeah. that he would be the opening act. And uh, sure enough, I guess, I guess they thought it was a good idea too, because that's what happened. How many dates did you play with Hendrix? Or did I wasn't he play many, with you? six or eight, something like that. And you know, I can't blame him. He got kind of, you know, fed up because, uh, uh, you know the. It happens. It happens often. the 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 headliner is the is the one that people want to see. He wasn't. He wasn't, of course, well known at all at the at the time. And so, the kids were there, and they wanted to see the monkeys. And they're all little ten, twelve year old kids. And uh, uh, so he uh, he, uh, he got a bit frustrated. But also, he broke his record, his first record. Uh, you know, about that time. And so he was able to go out and start uh, headlining himself. Uh, you had a good eye for for talent, that's for sure. And <laughs> what, what did uh, that's pretty uh, obvious? <laughs> yeah. Well, what was your impression of him uh, from what you got to know of him? He was a wonderful guy. He was a very he was young. You know, he was just a kid like me, you know, early twenties, and uh, very were very shy. I remember very quiet, very shy, and you know, a little naive maybe or or something. You know. Uh, uh, and all he did was just want to play, uh, play the guitar, you know, and, and sing. He was, uh, and but we hung out, you know. He spent, you know, a lot of time, you know, traveling and then on private airplane. Or we had a private airplane, and and then in hotel rooms because we couldn't leave the hotel because mm-hmm. of all the, the kids. And so, yeah, that's that's how it, uh, you know. And so we had a wonderful time, you know, hanging out and partying and stuff like that. Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees is our special guest today. Uh, Mickey, you you remember any other opening acts? Are there anyone else? Oh yeah, we out? had uh, Ike and Tina Turner. 
the Fifth Dimension, Lulu. Hmm. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. And then in the 80s, 86, it was Weird Al Yankovic. You know? Wow. Weird Al Yankovic. What? And um, uh, just trying to think uh, who else. Well, over the years, you know, a few different people, yeah. Now, as you were told you got this gig, and let's, you know, we'll go back to the uh, the beginning of the, uh, while you were auditioning, uh, how many people yeah. auditioned uh, for that same part? Uh, I, I hear about 400 on the West Coast. I'm not sure about the East Coast. Uh, you know, it would have been everybody in and around Los Angeles uh, at, and New York, I believe, at the time. I heard about 400. I, um... I didn't see the famous ad. I had an agent because I already had a series when I was a kid, and I was doing some television work at the time. Um, and uh, I went in for a you know private private audition. Now, but what... there was like ha- there was a number of auditions. It went on for quite a while. Screen tests, like I said, there was music, there was singing, there was improvisation, acting. Uh, it went on for quite a while, much longer than your normal sort of uh, uh, audition process for, a, for a, a, a show, a regular show. What are you talking about, an hour or two hours? What, what kind of audition was it? How long? Oh, no, it went on for weeks. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Oh, no, I mean, what? Yeah, well, not every callbacks. day. No, it, yeah. I'm, what I mean is there was callbacks. Yeah. That, yeah. When you go in for your first one, it's usually quite brief. I remember the first audition, and it was just reading from the script. There was already a script. But the names of the characters, of course, were Bob and, and you know, Fred. And, Innocuous and, names, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so I'm, that was the first audition. And then the first callback, I can't remember what order it was all in, but it, there was improvisation, they, it was like an interview on camera, just asking wacky questions. And then, um, then there was a, a playing uh, with, a, you know, uh, with instruments, you know, they set up some drums and had guitars and and basses and stuff, and everybody would do a, a tune that, uh, or two. That's when I did Johnny Be Good, for instance. Mm. Um, and then uh, there was another uh, uh, callback, and I believe the, the last one was uh, uh, scenes, scene study. Uh, you know, learning learning lines in a scene, and. And doing it on camera again, like screen test, like Hollywood screen test. Do you remember so a total who... of at least four or five separate uh, auditions, each one lasting a few hours? Yeah. What was the What was the order in which you guys were selected? In other words, you. Oh, I have no idea. You, you don't know who was uh, who was first, no, no. who was second. No. You ultimately met everyone no at the same time. I'm sorry. You ultimately met the other three at the same time. Yeah, I don't remember, frankly, um, uh, I don't remember uh, meeting Mike. I mean, I had. I must have met him. I don't remember Mike and Peter so much, but I do remember David. And I think it was probably because we'd had similar backgrounds. He'd also been a child star and <clears throat> in uh, Oliver on Broadway, yeah. amongst some other stuff. And so I think maybe we had a little bit more in common. He'd done some television and work and... and um, and I just, for some reason, I remember uh, us being put together, t- the two of us, to do a little scene on these screen tests. And uh, but then I, I didn't uh, r- really meet uh, uh, Peter and David, or, or I mean, and Mike and, and Peter, or, and, until my agent called me and said, uh, "You got the pilot." Hmm. I was going to school. I was studying to be an architect. Where Where were you and, studying? In, in here in Los Angeles at LA Trade Tech. Mm, that's interesting. Have, mm. uh, are you still interested in architecture, or did that go by the? Oh yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah. Well, I am, and and I also build things. I have a, a full blown uh, woodworking shop with all the tools, and and I. Um, in fact, I'm just starting a, a to build a shabby chic uh, um, storage um, sitting box for my wife and the. In the living room. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know your daughter Amy has followed you into uh, into show business. Yep. Uh, any and she's she's been married for a while now. Does she have children? Mm-hmm. So you're a grandpa. No kids. No, no kids. Oh, nope. you're not a grandfather. No, I'm not. 
No, that's it. No, and I have three other daughters who um, are all involved in in, in very nice, uh, serious relationships. But I, I don't know. If I, I'm not sure I'm going to be a grandfather anytime soon. No. Oh. Hey, listen, I was going to ask you how uh, how the uh, the kids reacted, and I guess I could ask you the same thing about your daughters. Uh, how did they react? I'm sure they uh, mostly in syndication. They saw you, right? The girls, my yeah. my children, yeah, and yeah, ab- yeah, absolutely, yeah. It would have been, well, they just grew up around it for, for years and years as children. Yeah. How was it? Uh, how was it them watching you? How, I, I, let me ask you it this way: How did it feel you watching them watching you on TV? I, you know, that kind of funny. I guess uh, you know they, <clears throat> they never. They didn't pay that much attention to it because that's just what Daddy did, you know. Yeah, it was no big deal to them. It was it, no, like, just no. like watching Dad as a carpenter. No, I do remember when, when one of my kids was a, a teenager. Um, <clears throat> you know, she was I don't know, fourteen or something. About that time that kids get kind of wacky as teenagers. <laughs> I remember because they li- we lived in England and then I came back to the states, uh, and, but they. They stayed there with her mom, and uh, but I remember what my this one daughter. Um, she once said to me because I was over there with them and hanging out, and she said, and "Daddy," she said they were even brought English. <laughs> "Daddy, you know it's it's really not right. Um, this is the age where I'm supposed to be rebelling with my friends, <laughs> and all my friends just want to meet you." <laughs> <laughs> And, and hang out and, you know, go, go out. And <laughs> That's great. Our very special guest today is Mickey Dolenz. Uh, you know him from the Monkees, but uh, he's had quite a long career. What was, the, what was the first time that you were on screen as a kid? How old were you? Um, well, my first screen test, I was six. It, it was for a movie that actually never got made, but that's the first time I was put on camera. As a, you know, professionally, shall we say, yeah. <clears throat> I was six years old, and boy, before that, I mean, I have some prenatal work coming out on ultrasound. <laughs> <laughs> now that's uh, that would have been at the uh, that screen test for the first time, but the first time I was on the air, I think I might have done a commercial or two before Circus Boy, but that first time I was on the air would have been at ten years old uh, when I uh, got a series called Circus Boy. Yeah, well, that that certainly uh, that lasted a little while, right? A couple of years. Uh, three years, yeah. Yeah. How were the Coogan laws at that point? Uh, were they were they already corrected, or were they still? Yes. Yeah. The, the, the that's a that's a great uh, great point. Yeah. I, I don't rem- I don't know the year that 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 it was enacted, but <clears throat> I certainly was protected by it. You were. I mean, I I pro I probably didn't need it because my parents were. You know, were not greedy and and um, yeah. they were very caring. So, so I probably didn't didn't need it, but it was nice to have it there. I mean, uh, I don't, I, you know, I don't know what year it was enacted, but it certainly saved a lot of kids after his tragedy. Yeah, oh, that was horrendous, and it, something certainly had to be done. Uh, the other thing is, you probably were pre residuals, right, when you were on the uh, on the monkeys. Yeah. Isn't that disgusting? Yeah, that's unbelievable. Yeah, we were. It was it was before the uh, in perpetuity, the Screen Actors Guild in perpetuity. So we never. Well, we we did get a a few. Um, uh, I think at that time it was six, six residuals. Oh wow! But that but that of course went away uh, very very quickly. And after that, nothing. Well, uh, anybody who did a show back then, you know, there, there would have been nothing. I mean, you're still in. Know, it's you, terrible. <laughs> we can see you every day here on the monkeys. Uh, you know, they they play every single day here in New York. And, I know. You know, and nothing nat- nationally, and you get nothing for that. Nothing. That is amazing. That's, that's unbelievable. Pretty rotten, huh? Yeah. Now, uh, wh- <laughs> what? Who owns the show? Uh, <clears throat> it's called now. It's called Sony TV. It used to be Columbia Screen Gems, and then now it's Sony. Uh, they own the domestic uh, 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 distribution rights. You know, it's amazing. And, that's and it, why it's on Antenna TV. I believe that that's their channel. 
Oh, no kidding. Yeah, that's, uh, that's put, where we get it. They put all those, those old Screen Gym shows on that, yeah. on that channel. Uh, let, me, uh, let me ask you this. When the band started touring, and just a reminder to our listeners, Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees is our very special guest. But when the band started touring for the first time, was it your time, your first time touring? No, actually, I toured not nearly, <laughs> not nearly at that level. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, with a cover band, I had a, I was in a couple of cover bands before the Monkees. Um, I'd gone from folk music, like I said, into rock and roll, and then I was mainly a lead singer. And <clears throat> you know, it was. Uh, I remember going across country once with a band to play somewhere, and then uh, I had my own uh, fronted uh, my own band called uh, a couple different names, Mickey and the One Nighters. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, and the missing links, believe it or not. Wow, that's <laughs> ironic. And, uh, yeah, I know. And uh, that's I was uh, uh, in those bands. They were cover bands, you know, and we'd play little cocktail lounges or play little bars or play little bowling alley, you know, uh, restaurants or something. So the disparity. Uh, Singing, sing uh, you know, uh, cover tunes, uh, that, and that's when I would. That's when I was doing like Johnny Be Good and uh, and all the songs of the of the early '60s. Um, you know, uh, Eric Burden, uh, House of the Rising Sun, uh, uh, you know, M Money, Barrett Strong, uh, you know, cover band. And you were playing... I remember talking to Ringo Starr about it once, and he said, yeah, I know what you mean, because the Beatles were a cover band. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, everybody forgets. In Hamburg, they played covers, just three hours oh, worth of covers. Well, well, they played... Yeah, every, everywhere they went, they played covers until they started... Uh, working in some of their original material, but that wasn't for a while. Yeah, uh, well, it, certainly you, you saw the disparity between touring the uh, the country as a you know no name um, cover band as as opposed to being the headliner of uh, a built-in oh, crowd yeah, every way. Huge, huge difference, yeah. Yeah, and when you started doing that, uh, were the four of you close together on the road? I mean, were you just constantly together, or did you have a little bit of freedom from each other? No, we were a, a constantly together, but b we weren't able to go out and 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 go anywhere, or do anything, because there was just always uh, in in the major cities there was always you know hundreds of kids out you know out in front of the the hotel just uh, just waiting for us. So we spent uh, most of the time in hotel rooms. And uh, you know, we each had our own little entourage. Yeah. We'd hang with our own, our own friends and 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 people. And uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, yeah, like I say, you know, we, I just mainly remember hotel rooms because we really couldn't go out anywhere. Turning Point with Frank McKay returns right after this. Welcome back to Turning Point with Frank McKay. You know, it's funny you mentioned the Beatles. The Beatles had a similar uh, reality, or you guys had a similar reality than the Beatles did for uh, for the period of time. And, oh, yeah. you know, I know that, um, you know, everything you hear and read and see in documentaries about the Beatles, I think they were thrilled when the touring stopped. How did you feel once it stopped? <clears throat> oh, I, didn't, I don't remember minding it terribly uh, at that time. I mean, it's, it's tough. Touring is tough, uh, and... And especially now, <laughs> at my age, it's uh, it's getting even tougher. Uh, it uh, the the shows are the easy part. Yeah, you know anybody will tell you that. In fact, I, I make the joke. Uh, they pay me to travel. I sing for free, <laughs> um, which which is true. And anybody anybody that tours will tell you that. Especially these days when travel has gotten so uncomfortable, so miserable. You know to travel these days and. Uh, you know, uh, so I'm, uh, you know, and I, I do my best, but it's not easy. It is not easy, the traveling part. The shows are the easy part. Like, for instance, this weekend I go out and I'm doing a solo gig in, uh, in Ohio. And, uh, you know, I'll leave here. I'll leave Los Angeles. Uh, uh, I believe I leave on Friday. And I do the gig on I get there. I have to travel the day before because it's back east, and I, I, I get there on, uh, uh, you know, Friday night, and then Saturday night I do the show, and then I leave and come back to Los Angeles on Sunday. So there's three days basically out of my life for a 75-minute show. Wow. 
If you look at it that way, it, it certainly uh, puts it in perspective. How many shows a year are you doing? Oh, it depends. You know, last year I, I must have done hundreds. I don't know. I, I uh, yeah. this year I'm 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 actually hoping I don't I don't do quite as many because I'm just uh, you know it's hard have to be home for a while. Yeah, yeah. How did the uh, how did the girls like the the traveling? Did they travel with you or were they? Well, my, no, no, no. Um, uh, actually, no. Having said that, uh, in '86, when we had the reunion, uh, they did, and that wasn't too bad because the whole family was there, and uh, <clears throat> we had a huge, fancy tour bus, you know, just for me and my family. And David had one, and Peter had one also, uh, so that wasn't too bad. Um, and they had a great time because we played a lot of amusement parks and. And uh, fairs oh, wow. and, wow. and stuff like yeah. that. So they 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 recall that as being just an amazing, amazing time. Yeah, I could imagine that that childhood is spending uh, going around yeah. in a tour bus, going to amusement parks. You know, just a right. tour of amusement- <laughs> a rock and roll yeah. tour at amusement parks. Like you can imagine as a, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that must have been pretty intense. Yeah, on a on a different note, and and sorry to be a downer here, but uh, you lost your uh, longtime bandmate. And and friend uh, Davy Jones recently that that was yep yeah that was yep, uh not, that, not that, good yeah did uh, how long did you know that um th- that he was sick did you know from the beginning well he wasn't he he, he wasn't sick he he um <clears throat> there there was no well as far as I know I mean I uh, you know uh th- there was no um what's the word uh, signs there was nothing huh symptoms signs no there wasn't a lot of symptoms he had. Uh, now I find out that he had complained a little bit about chest pains once in a while, but he thought it was indigestion. And, um, no, there wasn't anything. He, we just finished a tour, and he was, uh, well, a few months before, and he was jumping around stage and, uh, you know, moving and singing, and uh, it turned out to be he had massive arterial sclerosis, but, wow. but no one had spotted it. Was he a smoker, Davy Jones? No. No, wow. Uh, I mean, I, I can't remember. He might have when he was younger. But I don't know. I'm not sure he did because I know I, I never smoked, so I probably would have noticed. Uh, yeah. He, maybe he did. I, I don't I don't know. But it was uh, arterial sclerosis, heart, you know, that uh, that got him massive blockage. He had a, but it just, like, basically came out of nowhere. Well, on on a on a happier note, anything's happier than that, of course. But on yeah. a happier note, uh, you have a monkeys convention coming up, and it's uh, it's in two thousand and thirteen, uh-huh. and it, it sounds very exciting. Every everyone's talking about it around, around here, so I, I'm oh, sure good. you're you're hearing it nonstop. Um, what what can you tell us about that? Well, that's that's it. You've just said it. It's a it's a convention, and it's celebrating. You know, obviously the monkeys, and it's. And there is uh, going to be a quite a, a healthy d- donation to David's. Uh, uh, they set up an equine memorial fund. Uh, he was huge into horses, as you may, yeah, you may sure. not know, and um, racehorses. And uh, so, yeah, they set up this uh, his kids and uh, and uh, and friends and people set up this David Jones Memorial Equine uh, Foundation to basically protect and take care of. Of of ex uh, race horses and stuff like that because you know the 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 day he passed he was, he'd just gotten off a horse uh, riding along uh, tra- training one of his other his other horses with the jockey and uh, well, that's when he when he had the heart attack um, so yeah so so I understand a major portion of that uh, the funds from the <clears throat> uh, from the convention are going to the equine fund. It's a tremendous uh, push or, or movement right now uh, on pop culture, and and I think it's uh, it certainly uh, bands and you know certainly shows like the Monkees are uh, beneficiaries of of that, and you you are part of uh, we called you a pop con, uh, icon, uh, pop culture icon. Uh, certainly you are that, and and so are the other guys. And like it or not, you are. I mean, do you like that? Is well, I don't think about it like that myself, but then again, I'm not, <laughs> I mean, that is somebody else, that is for someone else to 
to decide, uh, I suppose, you know, um, what I am. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't think of myself as that. But then again, I haven't lived with it all my life. Uh, you know, uh, after the monkeys, I, I mentioned I moved to England, and I became a, a television producer director for the BBC and for uh, uh, some of the, all the big uh, English uh, motion picture and, and television uh, companies. And uh, actually, I was known as Michael, Michael Dolans, um, and I was uh, just a TV producer director. Uh, and eventually, when they, someone would do an article on me, uh, they, they didn't even say the monkeys. They said television producer Michael Dolans, you know, uh, is announcing the the uh, you know the premiere of a new of a new television show, so I um, I was removed from it for for many years uh, in the uh, mid to late seventies, right through the eighties, until uh, basically uh, eighty six when we went out on the monkey tour. I was in production on a television series when <clears throat> I was offered this. It was going to be a very short little you know, tour a few weeks doing these amusement parks and and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, fairs and stuff. And I, my wife and I thought, well, that'd be fun. We'll take the kids and we'll have a little summer break, and it's only going to be for a few weeks. And, of course, three years later, I was still on the road. Amazing. Wow, that's, a, <laughs> that's unbelievable. Crazy. Now, let me ask you something. I just want to jump back to uh, the the time when – uh, when you, you mentioned that Michael was the uh, he was the point person pushing to get more say and, and to get uh, you know more in the decision making uh, process uh, when the show mm -hmm. was going on, do you think if you kind of would have just went along to uh, gone along to get along, uh, do you think the show would have lasted longer than three seasons? I, I know it had nothing to do with the show. It had to do with the music. Oh, it, it, right. It wasn't, it wasn't the show that. We never, I certainly never had uh, any problem with the show. I mean, I was much more used to, to being an actor and doing the comedy in the show than, than I was recording. I had much experience in the recording business um, myself. Uh, uh, no, it had nothing to do with the TV show. The TV show just basically, you know, just kind of ended. We, in those days, you did 26 episodes a year, which um, is about twice what they do these days. So it's the equivalent of being on the air for about four years right. nowadays, it would be. <clears throat> and I think it just ran out of, you know, we just, you know, we're very young and very hyped up, and um, uh, the show just, uh, you know, <clears throat> it just sort of ended naturally. No, the, the music and the, and the recording thing had, had was an entirely different kettle of fish. If you had to pinpoint a turning point in your career, or in your life, if you prefer, uh, what would it be? Well, a few. I mean, uh, I, I, the monkeys, obviously. Yeah. Uh, quite a big turning point. But I think before that, even Circus Boy, if you're talking professionally, you know, Circus Boy would have been a huge turning point. You know, I was a little kid going to school, and all of a sudden I was a TV star. Wow. Uh, so that would, that would have been certainly a, a turning point. Um, having kids... You know, I think that that certainly uh, changes your life for the better. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Mickey Dolans is out, has been our guest. We appreciate having you, Mickey. What is uh, what would you like to say in closing? Do you have a website we can point people to? Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, I do. MickeyDolans.com. I have a new CD out called Remember, which actually is stories and little. Uh, well, it's music. It's a it's a CD of songs that that had a lot to do with with my life and those turning points as you just mentioned like for instance i do a version of johnny be good on that on this new cd i do a version of good morning good morning by the beatles and sergeant pepper because i was at that session hmm. uh... and all the songs have a little story attached uh... you know and they were certainly a part of the some of those turning points uh... in my life my website again is mickey dolans dot com and uh... thanks so much for uh, your time and interest Mickey Dolans has been our special guest today. We thank you very much, Mickey, for being here. Thanks for your time. And we thank you all for listening. Tune in next week to Turning Point. Turning Point with Frank McKay is brought to you by Herman Katz, Cam, Jenny, and Klein, Duffy and & Duffy, and Gold Coast Bank. 
Turning Point with Frank McKay was produced by Out of the Box Studios in Bohemia, New York. Executive producers Frank McKay and Harry Oates. Director of Operations Corey Arnold. Audio and Studio Engineering Francis Kazmarek. And James DeZigo of Sage Studios. Webmaster Eric Soul. Radio segment producer James DeZigo. Hotel and accommodations provided by Ohika Castle Hotel and Estates in Huntington, New York. Transportation services provided by Mark of Elegance Limousine in Hop Hog, New York. Catering services provided by Windows on the Lake in Ronkonkoma, New York.